Hi, my name is Daniel Dimoski, and uh, in this video I will present a game between uh, Boris Gelfand and Vasily Ivanchuk. Uh, game from uh, FIDE Grand Prix uh, event that was held in uh, Beijing, uh, China in 2013, uh, that in the uh, month of July. This is a game from round eight of that event. And um, I'm studying this game particularly because I want to learn more of uh, how to um, play against King's Indian defense. And uh, Boris Gelfand. Israeli um, Grandmaster is one of the um, best models, I guess, for for it for me because he was play he's playing uh, he was playing uh, principal D four against uh, King's Indian defense and he had a very good score during his career. And um, okay, so a little bit about uh, two of these. Uh, they are about. They had about similar careers. Uh, chess careers. Now both of them are basically semi-retired chess players. Even though both of them are still in top hundred. So let's see. Um, Gelfin was born in uh, nineteen sixty-eight. In June 1968, while Ivanchuk was Vasily Ivanchuk was born in March of 1969, uh, a little bit younger, but they are both now uh, uh, 53 years old. Ivan Ivanchuk is still. Uh, ranked 65th in the world with a FIDE rating of 2678, um, while Gelfand is ranked 70, uh, 71st with a FIDE rating of uh, 2668. They were both very close to being number one. Uh, uh, Gelfand was, uh, had picked uh, at uh, number uh, place number three at the FIDE rating list in July 1990, while uh, Ivanchuk picked at number two in July 1991. Um, so why is this also relevant? Uh, because this was played in 2013, one year after uh, Boris Gelfand lost uh, his world championship uh, match in 2012 uh, to Vishwanand Anand. So he also had uh, that late bloom uh, late in his career when he was al he almost uh, became a world champion uh, uh, because the close the match against uh, Vishwanand Anand was very close after uh, the first 12 uh, classic games. Uh, result was 6-6 six, six with a lot of rows and uh, he lost uh, to one and then uh, a rapid play uh, tiebreakers two and a half to one and a half. Okay, so enough about that. As you can see, I have um, also added to this video some photos of both players and uh, some quotes. Um, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk is one of the, uh, one of the probably most liked uh, figures in the world of chess because he he's a really l loving chess so much and for him it's less of a profession more of a love and, uh, love and many times he is very impressive uh, in his uh, interviews where he explains mind-boggling calculations. And another quote by Gelfand, where he explains uh, 
the beauty of chess as well. You can read it there. Um, so onto the game. Without further ado, so as we said, um, d4 by Galifant, who is white here, and Vasily Ivanchuk goes with a knight f6, uh, preparing to play a king's in defense. Sander move c4 by, uh, Galfant and preparing uh, white is black is playing g6 preparing uh, to fianchetto bishop uh, uh, g7 in the next move um, white plays another uh, very regular move uh, knight c3 bishop uh, uh, g7 and then uh, move uh, for white e4. Something that I need to learn to play better because uh, for my own game, I am playing very passively against King's Indian defense, and many times I get into trouble. I actually li <laughs> like to play e3 instead of e4, whereas uh, e like that goes into semi classical uh, King's Indian uh, defense uh, variation, which I tend to play instead of a more um, aggressive, a more forthcoming move e4. Next move by black is d6. White plays bishop to e2. Uh, black castles. Uh, Knight f3, uh, pawn to e5, uh, white castles, knight c6, and this is more or less um, standard position after seven moves in the Indian defense. White plays d5 and um, black uh, moves uh, uh, his knight away to e7 uh, that it was attacked. Okay, so this is the main line um, uh, bayonet attack. The main idea in this opening is for black to try to um, attack on uh, king side where uh, and for white is trying to attack on, on king side and this is something that I need to learn as well and I usually don't do that I really pretty much like to get to my uh, dark square bishop to b2 which is not a standard move and a standard plan because actually if you see the pawn structure uh, in the King's Indian uh, by, uh, dark, where Bishop by, by White doesn't belong to B2 and that's one of my uh, typical mistakes when playing King's Indian just wasting move and uh, my Bishop is misplaced which I need to learn more. A typical move for uh, King's Indian and Bononi structures uh, is uh, knight to h5. Uh, in most openings, in most games, uh, there is a saying that knight on the rim, that the side of the board is a dead knight because it doesn't have squares but for Benoni and uh, Benoni and King's Indian structure King's Indian defense structures uh, knight to h5 is a very typical move because he's actually trying to some variation get to f4 the usual outpost by uh, that that is created by uh, pawn on e5 or maybe pushing some points as well. Uh, to prevent that, to prevent the knight on uh, 
f4 uh, white is forced to play g3 which kind of weakens uh, white's uh, king side but uh, in this position it is necessary to play such rook because you don't want to allow knight uh, um, black's knight to get to that outpost and then four so now that that is no more outpost so what well, uh, black continues with uh, a5 uh, white white takes uh, rook takes and knight to d2 uh, knight has no business being on h5 anymore more black so it retreats and returns to f6 uh, white plays a4 rook uh, uh, retreats to a8 knight b3 and on to c5 kind of uh, um, tension in the center between two point chains uh, now and only now uh, uh, the bishop from uh, c1 uh, develops to uh, to d2 uh, sh for the shuffling of this knight that came from uh b7 to d7 so to d from b8 to d7 to f6 to h5 and now back reshuffling of that knight repositioning now a5 and now pawn break with pawn from a7 to a5 to, from f7 to f5 Something that uh, Jim Ben Feingold probably wouldn't uh, approve. Uh, on to f3. Knight <laughs> comes back to f6. But that was the, the whole idea getting back so one can uh, develop and to make tension in the, in the center allowing that pawn to move queen to c2 uh, adding one more defender of the pawn and e4 pawn to h5 uh, further attack of black and uh, king side one of the thematic uh, moves in king's india defense knight to uh, a4 pawn takes uh, uh, from uh, f5 takes to four uh, takes with the pawn from f3 bishop uh, to h3 attacking uh, the rook on f1 uh, rook to f3 and now king uh, retreats to to uh, h7 black king retreats to h7 also uh, uh, guarding that weakened pawn on uh, g6 weak spot for black now that was uh, abandoned but bo by both pawns on uh, f and h lines uh, Bishop uh, to e8 to f8, uh, challenging the the black's uh, light uh, square bishop. Bishop uh, to g4, uh, rook to rook uh, evades the bishop, going to f2, and now bishop from g7 to h6 uh, white fianchetto's bishop from f uh, 
one to uh, G2. And further reshuffling of the knights, knight from E7 to G8. It's a little bit st stranger of a move, but it happens in this kind of cl close position where the pawns uh, are locked in the chains in the center and there is uh, little to no um, kind of uh, ability to get them into the game. This is a not entirely close position, but semi-close position. Knight to uh, b6, rook to uh, b8, uh, rook battery, uh, rook to f1, uh, queen to e7. Uh, on h3, challenging the light square bishop of black on g4. Uh, he retreats to uh, d7. Um, white decides to exchange the dark square's uh, bishops. King takes check, queen to d2. King retreats, uh, black king retreats to g7, queen uh, g5, rook uh, f7, and knight to d2. Okay, so basically there's the uh, attention on uh, an f file and regrouping, regrouping. Uh, against that uh, those key squares and, and, uh, and the f file mainly the f6 uh, uh, black's uh, rook also goes to f file to f8 queen uh, reshuffles to h4 and uh, blacks decides to move knight and exchange the, a lot of material queens are take, going off the board the rooks are going off the board pair of rooks and queens and now this is uh, the end game knight to uh, h7 uh, rook takes on d7 uh, knight takes on d7, rook uh, retakes, pawn to h4, typical move for endgames, kind of better they are there. Uh, knight to f6, attacking the pawn on uh, e4. White is not concerned, he's counter attacking uh, the the rook on, on d7, rook retreats to uh, c, c7, and now a knight to d2, uh, defending the pawn on e4. Knight to black uh, responds with knight on uh, g4, and White continues with the rook on b1, going uh, with the basic principles, and that is rook on the open file, targeting that weak pawn by black that is on b7. Now, for the reshuffling of the knights, knight, the other knight to black to f6, uh, adding attacker on. Uh, and e4, knight, uh, rook to uh, b6, attacking yet another pawn, uh, the pawn on d6. Black defends with the rook on d7. Bishop reshuffles to uh, f1, uh, probably trying to add another uh, defender to both pawns on b uh, to on c4 and e4 yeah and it goes to d3 king reshuffles to 
F8 Knight three Knight from uh, G4 retreats to H6 Bishop reshuffles a little bit of shuffling here because uh, it's not clear that anybody anyone here has uh, any advantage uh, trying to attack their opponent's uh, weak pawns here uh, Knight to f7, knight to b1, rook goes back to uh, c7. Uh, now that knight on f7 is defending the pawn on d6, and he's also making room for the other knight to chase that rook away from uh, b6. A knight but to d3, uh, as I said, knight to uh, d7, attacking the rook on b6, right retreats to b1, king uh, coming to the center, which is one of the main teams when uh, there are no queens and most of the materials is exchanged. The end games, uh, the king is one more attacker and uh, important piece and it's better if it's closer to the where the action is and that is in center um, now bishop uh, goes uh, white goes to a4 attacking the knight on d7 knight to d8 the other one the bishop takes the knight on d7 King takes king white king to g2, uh, trying to centralize knight to f7. Pawn takes pawn uh, moves, and this is a temporary pawn sacrifice, breaking the chain of the pawns on g6 and h5. Uh, pawn takes. King is coming closer to the center. White kings. Knight defends uh, the pawn, going to h6 and defending the pawn on uh, g4. Uh, rook goes back to b6, attacking both pawns on d6 and b7, and also blocking the pawn on uh, b7 from moving up. And also preparing, I guess, the knight on uh, c3 to move. King to e7. Uh, knight goes to d1. Knight to g8. Uh, pawn, uh, king takes pawn on g4. Uh, knight uh, check. Uh, knight to f attacking the king and the pawn on e4 king retreats and defends the pawn retreats to f3 and defend the pawns on e4 and the uh, king moves uh, and the rook moves to back to uh, d7 now uh, knight uh, is going back to d3 and also defending on uh, e4 e4 and prob maybe also uh, trying to get to e5 to add another attacker to pawn on d6 king uh, goes back to f8 knight goes to b6 king goes back to uh, e7 because to get back into defense that square it's a very peculiar position where white is definitely better as it's it, uh, white is attacking uh, is more active in this uh, end game knight goes back to c3 knight goes uh, king goes back to f8 probably uh, as it uh, black is objectively worse here is trying to 
get a draw by repetition. Uh, white is rightfully so correctly assessing the position and saying that it declines that draw by repetition. Going to rook to b1, king to g7, trying going back to the defense of g6 uh, pawn as that's where probably the rook is going. King to uh, e2, king to uh, a6, uh, rook attacks, uh, goes to f1, attacking the knight, and uh, f6, the knight retreats, uh, uh, white knight goes to b5, attacking the pawn on d6. King is getting uh, closer. Not quite sure what's the business of what's his business on uh, on uh, h5 as he cannot take that pawn because knight is there and and uh, h7. Taking that pawn will lose uh, it won't lose knight because it's defended, but it's very bad to be in open field without your pieces supporting you. I can get easily checkmated. Uh, king to e3. Black king is getting closer to white's position. This is danger dangerous for. Black, as I guess there is no actually uh, better activity for black as his pieces are a little bit stuck. There's no good moves for either rook or knight that are not immediately losing as he is in Zugzwang. If he moves uh, the rook, the pawn take, is taken and uh, is going to be taken by knight and d6. Uh, Black Knight uh, has no moves as he cannot go to G5. It's uh, attacked, protected. I mean that field by a pawn and G uh, and H and H4 uh, and both squares and uh, F file that we can that can be where a Knight can jump to. F6 or F8 are both protected by the rook. And you cannot actually move any of the pawns. Uh, C5, C, D6, and E5 uh, are locked. And if you move pawns, uh, pawns and B6 and uh, G, uh, and, uh, pawns and B7 to b6 is taken and same goes to, uh, with the pawn and g uh, and g7 g6 it goes to g5 uh, g5 it's going to be taken by a pawn and uh, by h4 uh, pawn so king moves putting uh putting black in more zugzwang King doesn't take an uh, h4, which is even more ridiculous. Going back. That uh, rook doesn't have any squares to, to infiltrate into what position as the uh, knight and rook are restricting each other, and so is rook on uh, e7, not disallowing him to come to the seventh rank, and the knight is defending both. Uh, f and six and f eight so doesn't have any points of uh, entry. And same goes for the knight, sort of knight and uh, b five. So what is uh, white gonna do here? White moves uh, to uh, g uh, one and he is attacking the pawn on uh, g g six. Um. Knight is retreating to f8 and is defending the pawn. King is going uh, next to 
going to the um, E3. So this is kind of dangerous. If imagine that uh, Black doesn't have no, uh, makes no active moves in uh, against the checkmate, well, White can come with the king to F3 and checkmate. Uh, uh, blacking uh, with uh, rook to h1. That's a possibility. So king has to move away. Blacking. Oh, so he is attacking the, the the rook on g1. Uh, rook moves away. Knight goes back to h7. A very passive square. Uh, rook to uh, f3. Restricting the, the 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 black skin and putting him to jail, sort of. Uh, king to g2. Knight comes back to c3. And pawn finally moves to g5, protected by the knight. Pawn takes, knight takes. King uh, the rook on uh, f3 is uh, attacked by knight. So then the rook moves to f5, attacking the knight, counteracting, counterattacking. And uh, that's basically it because black is in Zugzwang now. And you find why at this moment in the game, uh, Basili Ivanchuk uh, resigned. Because right now, uh, uh, black has several options. He has to first retreat the knight. Knight can come to two places. Knight to uh, h7 or h3, uh, whereas h3 would be a terrible mistake. So the only possible position for a knight is to to go to to be, go back to h7, and here comes the slow infiltration of white of, of white into. Black's camp, or he's gonna get checkmate, or he's gonna lose peace here. And being Zugzwang here. That this is a long game. That that was, in in my opinion, this is a very 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 boring game. But it shows how you need to play uh, Kings in the defense. That it's very complex. And the, the the lessons I need to learn how to, which pieces will go where and what are the basic plans with the, with King's Indian defense and uh, to learn a little bit of the structures as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, this is my first video of me doing the. Uh, commented in the games and trying to learn a little bit of uh, how Grandmaster team can play certain positions. Um, hope you liked it. I'm sorry if it wasn't as interesting as it should be, but uh, this is my way of learning and trying to learn um, more about how to play against Kings in defense and more about how Grandmasters are playing it uh against it and how they playing it and hopefully i will start learning and to play better against so bye for now and see you in the next video